Hey everyone, it's Ed with Slow Car Fix, and in this video I'm going to fix whatever is wrong with this transmission seal on my 1964 Corvair Monza Coupe. Alright, this is my 1964 Corvair Monza Coupe. Uh, this car was in a storage container for around 30 years. I've since brought it back to life. I enjoyed it a little bit, but the transmission was really bad. And a couple videos ago, I changed the transmission for a good use transmission. Did a bunch of work while I was in there. Um, and unfortunately, I've developed a leak. And I've only had it for a couple of drives, but the torque converter seal is leaking. So it's running and driving perfect. Uh, I've done this job a million times. I've covered a couple of videos on um, detailed engine removals from Corvairs. That's not what this video is gonna be. My last video was a little more detailed and I've replaced the bell housing seal, the crank seal, the oil pan gasket, torque converter seal, and the seal between the diff and the trans. All that stuff when I swapped the transmission out literally two weeks ago. Took it for a drive, uh, came back, everything was working good. Went for a nice drive with my wife and my dog. It's working fantastic. Uh, noticed some drips in the driveway. So something went wrong with the torque converter seal because it's the only thing that, only reason it would leak transmission fluid from the bell housing, and that's where it's leaking from. So unfortunately, that means I have to pull the powertrain out of this car. Um, it's not a huge deal, but it's a bunch of labor for a little tiny seal. So the first thing I did was I went to Clark's Corvair, ordered a new seal, got that on its way. It's here now. Um, all the stuff that I did uh, when I swapped the transmission, I don't have to redo, fortunately. Um, I don't have to take the bell housing off. I don't have to even take the flex plate off. I just have to uh, drop the powertrain, pull the shroud off the front of the engine so I can access the torque converter bolts. Uh, and then I have to split the diff and trans from the bell housing remove the torque converter, see what happened with this seal, replace this stupid seal, and put it all back together and hope it doesn't leak. I did all the things last time. I greased the seal like Clark's recommends. I cleaned everything up. I spent a bunch of time doing all that. It still leaked. So either I did something wrong, which is quite probable, that I nicked the seal or it didn't go in quite right. Maybe it was just a bad seal. Maybe it's not, maybe it's leaking around the outside diameter of the seal where it goes to the diff. That's a very small possibility. Um, likely when I put the torque converter on, I must have tore the rubber or something. But I'll know as soon as I take it out. The unfortunate thing is to access it, I've got to pull the whole powertrain out and that's a couple hours worth of work. So I'm set up to do it. Uh, I've got a nice hydraulic lift table, Harbor Freight, 1,000 pound lift table. I've got my four post lift. Uh, I usually set things up on a table with tools. And I don't even have to really drain the fluids. So what I will do though, is because I wanna change the, uh, my dipstick, power glide dipstick tube. So I will drain the transmission. I'll crack that off because I want to change that anyways. Um, but I shouldn't have to drain the engine oil, which is good because I just put it in. It's got like 20 miles on it. Um, yeah. So if you've watched some of my videos before, what I do, typically I do things systematically. I'll, with Corvair stuff, I will do all the stuff up top. I'll disconnect everything in the engine bay. I usually work counterclockwise disconnect the uh, starter wires and the, the battery cable, obviously, and the ground cables, work my way around, disconnect the ignition, fresh air hose, take off that front, the perimeter seal strip. Then I'll put it up, 
take the wheels off, uh, probably take the air grill off, put it the rest of the way up, start everything from the underneath. Uh, yeah, it's gonna be, just sucks that I just did it, but no use complaining about it. I'll just get on it and get at it. And uh, it's a beautiful car to drive. I'm really looking forward to using it. So uh, it's leaking bad enough that I don't want to drive it like this. So I will do that now.
All right, I can't see any obvious signs of damage. It looks like it's in flush. Everything's cool, but like it was certainly leaking. You can see the drip in the bottom of the bell. Crank seal is nice and dry, which is uh, which is good. Just a little bit of transmission fluid. So this is the only spot it can leak around the torque converter. So now let me just look at the ceiling surface. It's pretty clean, like I cleaned that all, but I'll clean it again, just to be sure. I'll crack the seal out and uh, yeah, see what, I can't really see what happened. It's hard to tell because it's got transmission oil running out of it now. I can't really see any obvious signs of damage, but it was leaking. It's not good. I wanted to see like a big tear in it or something. And as soon as I put my seal puller on it, it's gonna mess it up anyways, so. Uh, all right, well, I will pull this seal out and clean the hole and see what it's like to put a new one in. All right, no smoking gun as of yet. Uh, one thing I did find, and I sent a picture to a friend of mine, um, the bushing, this is a new one. Uh, the bushing that was in that torque converter, wherever it went, um, it was pretty rough and pretty worn. And uh, my friend Dave said that, uh, he said that that could cause this to wobble or the shaft to wobble um, on the diff and this to then not seal because it'll be doing one of these. Um, I don't know, who knows? Uh, this is the seal that I took out. The spring is over there on the floor. The spring popped out of it. There's, I didn't see any tears in the seal. Obviously there's a, a mess where I pulled it out with my seal puller, but I didn't see anything crazy. That bushing was a bear to get out. So I got to tap in the new one. Um, I just used a puller, but what I had to do, unfortunately, was I had to take a hacksaw blade and just score it, uh, score the bushing itself to weaken it. Um, that way I could, uh, Get a little pull on it. I did spray the whole thing down. It's wet now, but I sprayed the whole thing down with brake clean to make sure that the torque converter itself isn't leaking. So I didn't think about that, but uh, so I guess I'm just gonna put the seal in, put the bushing in, um, and that's like that's everything that's in here. The bell has like this here. It's not leaking oil. Uh, it's just this transmission fluid. So in transmission fluid, a drop of it gets everywhere. It's a crime scene. All right, shaft is all polished. This uh, area that the seal goes in is polished. My new bushing is in, this is polished. Like there's nothing else I can do here. So I'm going to uh, install a seal. Um, I'm gonna put a little bit of anaerobic sealant on the outside of the seal, just a tiny little dab. Uh, I was told that's a good trick. Not on the rubber, but just on the metal to the diff. Um, I was also told that I don't need to grease this seal, even though I'm pretty sure that Clark's instructions said to grease it. Um, but I'm going to uh, install it now and see what happens. So the seal is in, it's flush. I just usually, Tap it around, you know, you just sort of get it started and then just tap it all the way around. Um, I just put like a light thin film of that anaerobic sealer just on the outside and just wiped it with my finger. And, uh, and that seemed to help it slide in, which is good. And then it'll set up. Um, anaerobic stuff is really good. They use it in aviation and stuff. So uh, I should just give this torque converter a final wipe and then Put it on and then that's it and I'm reassembling. All right, so this is all back together. Uh, oh, I got one more bolt that I forgot. And then I'm really getting into putting it back in the car, which is good. I've made quick work of this. It was easy because 
everything's just been apart on this thing literally like two weeks ago so it's at this point and with Corvairs and stuff I know what sizes to get I know what wrenches to get I know how to set myself up with a big giant mess um, so it's kind of like working on an old friend or working with an old friend so I'm going to uh, yeah I'm gonna wrap this thing up try and get it in here uh, the two hardest parts about putting it in uh, early is um, the axles. Well, the axles are the hardest part on any Corvair. Uh, on a 64 in particular, it's a bit of a wrestle to get the uh, transverse leaf spring in place, uh, especially when you're by yourself. But uh, sometimes you have to jack up one side of the suspension or whatever, but I'll do that. Um, so I'm, uh, it, it was easy to come out, but it'll be a couple hours to put it back in. So. But talking is not going to get it done, so I got to get on. All right, it's the next day. That was a lot of work for one day. I pulled the engine out, changed the seal, changed the bushing and the torque converter, uh, cleaned everything. I brake cleaned the torque converter to make sure that it's not leaking, um, like it's not rotten and leaking itself. Uh, put it all back together and then took it for a drive all in a short period of time. So what I did last night was when I parked it, I, so I drove it about 30 miles and when I parked it, I parked it with a piece of cardboard underneath. Let me show you what I found. All right. Once again, it's running and driving great. Uh oh. So that's not a huge leak. That's like that's spread a lot on cardboard. I'm gonna make myself feel better by saying that's not a big deal. Uh, but there is in fact still a drip from the bell housing. I don't know if I've ever had one of these seal up completely um, without leaks on a power glide, but I know it's possible. Um, so I think what I'm going to do at this point is monitor the situation, enjoy the car, and drive it, put some miles on, see if it stops or gets worse. I would guess it won't stop. Um, will it get worse? I don't know. So before you ask, which you will, I'm sure, um, the uh, nothing else is leaked on the transmission. It's got a new uh, shift cable O-ring. It's got a new tranny pan gasket. It's got a new, I don't know, everything. The governor seal, everything's new. Um, it's definitely coming from the bell housing and there's only one spot uh, in the bell housing that leak, or that, to leak from, and that is that torque converter seal. Um, at least I know that I can, and I kind of figured I could, but. I can do it all in one day and uh, and not a whole day. Um, I think uh, it was probably about five hours, five, six hours. Um, so I can swap it. I think if it got worse, if it gets worse, which I don't, who knows? Old cars leak. I'm okay with old car leaks. Just has to be drivable it has to not make a mess over the entire car if it's dripping that much overnight not really worried about it the way it was leaking before uh it was covering the back of the car in transmission fluid that's not acceptable so uh the only other thing i can think of is that maybe the torque converter itself now i i did spray it with brake clean let it dry and it was full of oil, so to watch and see if anything seeped through. The only other thing I can think of is that there's a rust hole somewhere in the uh, in the torque converter, which seems odd to me that an oil-filled thing would rust, but it, it is corroded pretty good. So if I was pulling it apart again, I, I don't think that converter would go back in. I think I'd put a different converter in just to see. Uh, but... Overall, it's okay. Uh, a for effort, 
and I would say that uh, that's an immense difference over what I, the situation I had where uh, it was leaking and not really drivable. Now I can use it and, and I'll see what happens. Um, I know sometimes I've had it before where the torque converter will drain down overnight, like especially if the car is sitting for a long time. It's, if the car is sitting for the winter, it almost always happens for, for power lights in my experience, is that uh, uh, the torque converter will drain down and fill the transmission. And when it fills the transmission, uh, then the weakest point leaks. Uh, and usually that's uh, the O-ring around the shift cable or uh, something like that. Um, not the case on this one though. It's coming from the bell house. I don't know. Anyways, I got a trunk weather strip that I'm gonna do on it. Other than that, I'm gonna be driving this car. See how it goes. Uh, so not terrible news, but not the news I was looking for either. Uh, a leak-free Corvair. Who knows? Um, I know it's possible. Uh, my Corsa doesn't leak at all. Manual transmission though. Uh, I'm not saying all power glides leak because I know it's quite possible to have them seal up properly. I just haven't had much luck with it. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching and uh, check out my other videos. There's a ton of videos on this car, uh, good and bad. Um, check out my other videos. If you get a chance, hit the subscribe button. Uh, it doesn't cost anything, but uh, it helps. It helps to let me know that you want to uh, see this kind of stuff. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.